Now we can go to our new examination tab and we will find that the first was interferometer, the second I blink, the third one is an IDUT. Same thing as interferometry, you find uh, another examination very close to the uh, knee boot examination, which is tear meniscus. It means that uh, exactly for interferometry and, and I blink, with the knee boot video, you can grab as well the tear meniscus evaluation. So, in a single video, we take two different evaluations. To start the evaluation, before to start, I want to remember that you should uh, set inside the right cone. So in this case, the right cone is the placido ring cone, and I will show you how to set it up. It's very easy, so we can remove the cone of the interferometry, and we can set up the placido ring cone. Very easy, and quite safe to do because I, again it's magnetic you don't have to screw and screw and there is no risk to um, make any any problem with it. Now we start the examination we ask again to fit the patient on the on the on the chin rest as she did now we select the correct eye as always so I will push on the right eye I tilt a bit again my device and I go for the cornea of my patient. So, uh, two fundamental things. The first one is the focus positioning. So, the picture is, has to be very on focus. Why, when the picture is on focus? Can you see the green uh, circle, the two semicircle getting green? It means that the focus of the picture is very good. So, this is a new indicator telling you if the picture is on focus or not, so you don't waste time after, the, after taking the video when the, the software will tell you, okay, you cannot analyze it. So this is a new tool helping you in the detection of the focus. Now, we go and focus on our patient. The second fundamental suggestion I was giving you is to keep the tear meniscus in the screen. Because as we said before, we said before, later on we can take a frame from the video and we will analyze the tear meniscus. So, once the picture is on focus, I start the video and I ask the patient to blink twice and keep open the eye until she can. We don't want to force the patient. We don't want to, okay, I think now it's more than enough, it was breaking everything. So it's very important, don't force your patient to keep the eye open for 25 seconds. It's useless because the software will detect the first breaking and when the patient blink, it means that uh, the nerves were telling that she was not able was not safe to keep the eye open, so it's good to, uh, um, to let her blink whenever she wants. So if you want to take another examination or to the other eye, you can just select the new eye on select eye button. After acquisition, we just close the video, and we have uh, the, um, the, the, the green button on the top left corner, which as well as for interferometer in the blink means uh, do the analysis. So I push on it and we are going to see the analysis. So I push on this blinking which actually was uh, lasting 7.76 seconds and we can see many breaking on the placido rings. What actually comes out in the, um, in the, in the view is two different uh, graphs. The first one is a map. Uh, explaining the position of the breaking on the cornea at a certain time. You can relate the color to the time to understand when and where the tear was breaking. The second graph you see is just a, a line graph and is explaining in the time the, per the percentage of tear broken on the surface detected. So this graphic, this graph shows if the breaking is very quick or is slow or is moderate or whatever. Anyway, the two most important uh, um, parameters we are going to look for are these two indicators over here. The non-invasive invasive first breakup time, which is 4.32 seconds, and the non-invasive invasive average breakup time, that is just a bit more than 6, 6.04 seconds. So, the value we really need is the 6.04, which is the average breakup time value. So now we can save the value and automatically, automatically everything is going to, save, to, to be saved. On this video, the software is asking if I want to proceed with the tear meniscus evaluation. 
so that we can just press yes to take a bit of frame from the video and to make the analysis of the tear meniscus 8. The tuition yes, and now the software asks you which frame you want to grab from the video to do this analysis. Which one to select? Our suggestion is to select the frame immediately after the opening of the eye, because in this way, like this frame, we are sure that the tear is well disposed and that there are no uh, false positive results due to any breaking or to any um, water that fell down by the cornea and increased the tear, um, the tear meniscus volume. So, this frame is good, I just push on select frame. The first thing you have to check is the position of this green circle. If you see now it's, it's automatic, but maybe you should uh, take care of it, because maybe, let me say, the detection was wrong, and you were finding a situation like this, where the, the green circle is not inside the placido rings. In this occasion, you should take the white arrows, the white crosses, and slide the circle exactly in the middle of the inner ring of the, uh, of the placido uh, ring cone. So this tool is a calibration tool which allows um, and higher accuracy during the test uh, analysis. After selecting the green spot, we just slide down the picture. Just remember you find the plus and minus zoom buttons on the top, uh, on the bottom left corner. So once we are in this situation, we have just to follow the process suggestion, so click upper meniscus border. For upper border, we mean the border of the tear meniscus, so not the eyelid, but the white edge over here. You can even zoom more if you care. Now it's much better, it's much more easy to do that. So, from the white edge to the eyelid, like this, you can set one more from here to here, from here to there. So you can set up to five different values, and automatically the software provides you the thickness in millimeter of this, of this uh, um, uh, um, meniscus. So now, which value to save? In this case, we suggest to save always the highest value, because we are looking for the maximum capacity of the main lacrimal gland. To look for that, we have to look for the maximum volume present on the ocular surface. So once you save, automatically the software saves the highest value. Even the highest in this case is not enough. So here we are dealing probably with an aqueous dry eye condition. So now we took interferometry, tear meniscus, breakup time, and eye blink. The thing we miss is Mayborough. 